good morning friends and welcome back to my channel you'll notice we're not in the kitchen today we're out in the backyard it's a beautiful typical december california day where we have nice warm weather uh, in the evenings and at night it might dip down to freezing i had frost on my car the other night but hey in the next you know the next few hours during the day the weather warms up that's a typical desert climate where you have drops of 40 to 50 degrees in temperature at night but it warms up in the daytime and that's because we have such low humidity in the air. Anyway, let's get to our today's project. Today I have a real fun project that we're going to work on. It's going to be making vanilla extract. And the benefit of making an extract is you have uh, something that you can keep on your shelf indefinitely. The alcohol helps to preserve whatever it is that's inside your jar and it's just got an indefinite shelf life. You don't have to process it. You don't have to put it in a in a water bath or a pressure canner or anything like that. You just simply, it couldn't be easier. You just simply put your uh, item that you want to extract the goodness out of. In our case, we're going to be using vanilla beans. I've got a couple different kinds of vanilla beans. They, I've ordered these and they came vacuum sealed. They look very nice. And all you need is vanilla beans, some sort of distilled spirit and a jar to put them in and labels to make sure you record what you've done. So today we're going to be making vanilla extract and the process is very simple. It's a basic process that you can use with uh, different kinds of uh, things that you might want to process and extract goodness out of. You can make vanilla extract, you can make cinnamon extract, you could make a lemon extract, mint or coconut or even almond extract and the process is the same for whatever item you wish to uh, extract the goodness out of. You're going to need um, the item. Now today we're going to be using vanilla beans and the benef another benefit is that you know that whatever ingredients that you placed into the jar are wholesome, healthy, you've made it yourself, you know exactly what's in there. Uh, when you buy commercial vanilla extract I think the main ingredient is water. It's not even the extract. So you're going to get a nice rich essence of vanilla or whatever item you're extracting. It's going to be great. And the basic things we're going to need for making vanilla extract, we're going to need some vanilla beans. And we'll talk more about the beans in just a minute, but these come vacuum packed, you order them. They're generally sold by the piece or by the ounce, or by weight, I should say. And um, you're also going to need some sort of a distilled spirit. And for vanilla extract, Normally, vodka is recommended. Vodka is a neutral spirit without a flavor of its own, so you'll really get the flavor of the beans. And uh, I have some Seagram's. It's been ultra distilled. If you don't know much about alcohol, and I really don't, um, I've been reading up on it. I've been going down the rabbit hole, as they say, studying about making this vanilla extract. But uh, vodka is a neutral spirit. It's been ultra distilled. It doesn't have a flavor of its own. So the the flavor of the vanilla can really shine. You can also use some sort of rum, and I have a coconut rum, I have a white rum, I have a spiced rum, but rum is a good spirit to use for uh, vanilla extract because it's distilled from molasses and from cane sugar. And it, while it doesn't have a sweet flavor, it does have that underlying basic sweetness, I guess you'd say, once the alcohol kind of uh, dissipates, it leaves you with a nice, sort of a pleasant addition, but a mild addition to your vanilla extract. So you can use rum. You can really use any alcohol. You can also use, I've had recommended to use bourbon. So you can use a bourbon of some sort. You can use tequila, you can use uh, brandy. You can really use just about anything that you have on hand. Whatever you like to drink is what you should use. And you're also going to need some sort of a nice glass jar. You can actually, if you have an empty alcohol bottle, you can use that. You can use these special bottles that are made for brewing. You can order these from amazon.com and they're, they're about $3 a piece or so. And these are uh, for brewing kombucha or I think for beer. And we can also use these for brewing our vanilla extract. You can use you can use some sort of a vinegar, a jar that's intended for oil or vinegar, as long as it's not got oil or vinegar in it, it's been thoroughly washed out. 
Uh, normally we use uh, clear bottles just to see how the how it's extracting, what it looks like, but you can use uh, colored bottles as well. You know, when you buy vanilla extract in the store, it comes in a brown bottle and that's to protect the uh, contents from the ultraviolet light. So you can use a bottle like this if you want to uh, brew it in this, or you could also uh, you could also make your extract in another larger bottle and then decant it into this for use because it's got this nice little pour spout. Makes it easy to pour your vanilla out. And another thing I thought of using, if you happen to have some of these old Good Seasons uh, shaker jars for making salad dressing, these can be used as well. These are more than eight ounces, so you have to consider that when you're, um, when you're making your uh, calculation for what to put in the jar. And you could use a mason jar. A lot of people like to use these. Uh, you can get the wide mouth or the regular mouth. You can easily get the beans in and out of the jar with this nice wide mason jar lids. And while you can get your beans in and out of a jar like this pretty easily, but it's much narrower of a mouth. So that's a consideration too, if you're gonna be taking your beans in and out of the jar. So any of those options work. So let's talk a little more about vanilla beans. And I'm gonna give you a little crash course on uh, how you can find them for sale, uh, what different types there are. So basically, when you're looking to buy beans for sale, you'll see grade A or grade B. There's a grade C, but they never sell those commercially. It's just little bits and pieces. So grade A, which is what these beans are, generally means that your bean is at least six inches long, also that it has about a 30 to 35 percent moisture content and it's soft and pliable. The grade B beans, which I believe these are grade B, grade B beans are a little shorter, a little thinner. They may have a little less caviar in the center of the beans. They're, um, they're good for extract making, but they're not good for baking. You want your grade A soft beans that are pliable that you can easily split and you can scrape the center out which is what they call the vanilla caviar. It's actually the seeds of the vanilla. And you can scrape those out and use them for baking. But the grade B beans are strictly for extract making. And there's nothing wrong with them. They may have a little less flavor, but you know, if you uh, distill them a little longer, that's going to counteract that aspect. And beans are sold by two methods, either by weight or by count. So if you buy a per count, say you buy 10 beans, you're not going to know exactly what it weighs unless you weigh it on your kitchen scale. If you buy it by weight, then you're generally gonna get, if they're big fat grade A beans, there's gonna be generally fewer beans uh, per ounce than if you would use the grade B beans. So you get more grade B beans because they're lighter and they're drier. So that's another consideration too. You might get more for your money using the grade B if all you wanna do is use these for vanilla extract. And where do vanilla beans come from? Well, I'm sure most of you already know. Vanilla is an orchid, it's a vine. And these are equatorial plants. They originated in Mexico and Central America and some down as far as Peru. There are 110 different species of vanilla, but there are only about three species that we use for making vanilla extract. We use vanilla planifolia. That is the main type of vanilla that we use, and that type has been uh, disseminated through most of the equatorial world where it's warm and humid and sunny and they have a good chance for uh, growing success. So the vanilla planifolia was taken from Mexico where it originated and taken to uh, Indonesia and Madagascar. And in Madagascar, area. It was grown in the what's now called the Reunion Island, but it was called the Bourbon Island at that time. And it was sometimes called the Bourbon Vanilla. So when you see something that says Bourbon Vanilla, it doesn't mean it has anything to do with having alcohol in it. It simply means that's the old name that the vanilla was called when it was from the Bourbon Islands. It takes three years for farmers to grow the vanilla plant to a size where it can flower and produce beans. And the beans generally have to be hand pollinated. There are natural pollinators in the New World where, where vanilla originated. 
and I believe there are uh, certain species of bee that can pollinate, but even with the natural pollinators, only about 1% of the vanilla flowers are actually successfully pollinated and become vanilla beans left to their own devices in nature. So when vanilla beans are grown on plantations around the world, they're always hand pollinated and they have to be picked at a certain time, a certain type of ripeness. So it's very labor intensive. So when you see the prices on beans, um, you have to bear in mind that it's a very labor intensive, uh, difficult thing to farm. It's not easy. So we kind of bear that in mind when we're purchasing. The second type of bean is Tahitensis or the Tahitian vanilla. So there are 110 species of vanilla, but there are three that we commonly use for making vanilla extract. We use vanilla planifolia, and this is the uh, flat-leafed vanilla, the one that's most commonly found. Probably, I don't know the percent, but a very high. The majority of your vanilla beans are from the planifolia. These are the Madagascar, the uh, African, Ugandan, uh, the bourbon, as we already talked about, they're called bourbon vanilla because of where they've been grown. The second type is Tahitensis, or the Tahitian vanilla, and these originated in the South Pacific area. And they have a more fruity and uh, floral flavor. The third type of vanilla bean that's available is called the Pompona. That's a different species from the Tahitensis and the Planifolia. And these are from the Peruvian Amazon area, and those are commercially available as well. I bought some vanilla uh, that I thought was Pompona from this certain company. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, companies that don't really understand. I bought these, what I thought were Pompona vanilla, but then on the package it says it's Madagascar vanilla and the variety is called Pompona, so I don't think it's true Pompona vanilla, but anyway, we'll see how that goes. So there are different varieties and all of them, any or all of them can be used successfully. And it just depends if you like the traditional deep rich vanilla, which most of us do, you're going to want the Planifolia vanilla. Uh, if you like a little fruitier, floral, lighter flavor, you might want the Tahitensis or Tahitian vanilla. And there are different, <clears throat> there are different methods that you can use too when, um, when jarring up your beans. And there's no right or wrong way. The USDA has set a standard of one ounce beans per eight ounces of uh, spirits, and that is for commercial people who grow and sell vanilla commercially. Uh, when you're doing it in your own home, it's your own kitchen, your own rules. You don't have to put one ounce per uh, eight ounces of spirits. You could put fewer beans and let it distill longer. Generally, it takes about a year to get vanilla extract. Although if you slice and cut your beans and remove the uh, caviar and put all that in there loosely, you'll get a product that you can use in three to four months. So if you're in a hurry, you might wanna do that. But generally, even the vanilla that's cut and the beans that are sliced and the beans where the caviar is separated from the pod, even those type of uh, production methods, it's recommended to wait for a year, six months to a year, because there are hundreds of flavor compounds in the vanilla that don't actually extract fully until at least six months to a year, sometimes longer. If you're using vodka, that's the one that will distill your, uh, your beans the quickest. If you're using another type of liquor, you may have to wait for the year, like rum, a year, 14 months. And another thing we need to keep in mind about our uh, liquor is you wanna have something that is 35 to 50% alcohol or if you're looking at proof on the alcohol bottle, that would be 70 proof up to 100 proof, but nothing beyond that because too much alcohol is not good for the, uh, for the vanilla beans and it's too harsh. So you wanna be between 35 to 45, even up to 50% alcohol. And most of your alcohol, if you look at it, will be 70 proof or 80 proof. That's what you're looking for. This is 80 proof. 
So that's just perfect in my opinion. This is also 80 proof. And my rum is 35 proof. So this is going to distill for a little longer. It's got a little bit lower alcohol content, but it's, you know, it's worth the wait from what I understand. The rum is pretty, pretty good. You can get rum that has a higher proof. Um, I've looked actually on the Captain Morgan website. They do, do sell rum that's up to 90 proof or 45% uh, alcohol. So if you want to do that, that's another option. It's all up to you. And I had vanilla beans that I got from Costco. I believe there were like five beans for $10. And this was when I was just getting interested in uh, making vanilla extract. I bought these, I was using them for cooking. I actually used them on a salmon dish. I took out the caviar, used it on salmon. And I also scraped some seeds out to use in my canned goods. Really great for your jams and jellies. There are a million, a million and one things you can do with your vanilla extract. So it's a lot of fun and a lot of nice, something good to have on hand, something wonderful to give for gifts. Let's get into the kitchen and I'll show you how easy it is to make your own vanilla extract. Okay, so I got out my trusty scale here. This weighs pounds and ounces. And I had two different orders from the same manufacturer or the same distributor, I should say. I ordered grade A Madagascar vanilla beans. I ordered this package of 10 beans. And I ordered a package which contained one ounce of beans. So I've already weighed the one ounce of beans. And look at how beautiful these are. Lovely. And they were indeed one ounce, according to my scale. So let us see how much these 10 beans weigh. And I think the cost was about the same. So these weigh 10 beans or 9 tenths of an ounce. So not quite one ounce. A little bit less than the package that was marked one ounce. So when you're buying by weight, it seems like they seem to pick nice bigger beans, whereas ordering by the bean, you can see some are a little bit shorter. Some might be not quite as plump. So I would tend to want to order by the ounce myself, but that's just me. It's roughly approximately the same. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, you can use any kind of glass container you'd like, mason jar, um, a regular kitchen glass jar, such as something that you've emptied out, you know, from spaghetti sauce or whatever, you could use that. But whatever jar you use, you're gonna to need to know how much volume it takes up. So these jars that I bought from Amazon, they said that they accept, or they fill with eight and a half ounces. So I took a cup, this is water. I took a cup of water and poured it in there and you can see there's additional room in there. So we're gonna be fine when we add our beans. We're not going to have to worry about our ratios being off. Then you also want to check to see if your beans, when they're put into the jar, if they're going to be too tall for the jar. So this, this bunch of beans are going to be just right. They're going to be just perfect. And if you occasionally have one that's a little bit longer like this, it may be a little bit too tall for this jar. You can snip the end or you can tie a knot. You can just tie this in one little knot and that'll make that'll reduce the length of it. I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. So there you see, I tied a little knot, just tied the knot on itself. Very simple little knot and that will make this a little bit shorter to fit in the jar. Now I'm doing whole beans. You can definitely split your beans if you'd like to, cut them in little pieces, however you want to do it. But I'm making these for gifts I had actually wanted to do Christmas gifts for this year, but obviously Christmas is right around the corner and I didn't, I never did get the project done. So these are going to be for next Christmas and that'll give them a really a good chance to age and mellow for a year, which is what's recommended. So let's get these into the jars. There's the one we tied the knot in. And as you can see, it went down in there quite nicely. It's going to be covered well with the alcoholic spirits we're going to use. I've already weighed these. They weigh an ounce. 
I've seen some videos where people say, well, they just put five beans or eight beans or whatever by counting the number of beans. You can't really go by the number of beans. You really have to weigh them. And it's your kitchen, your rules. If you don't want to have such, uh, use so many beans per jar, you can definitely cut it down, but just know that you'll have to let it, um, you'll have to let it steep a little bit longer to get that real good depth of flavor from your vanilla. And we're almost done with our one ounce of beans here. Okay, they're all in there nicely. I have enough room to cover them with my liquor. And the liquor we're going to use for this bottle is Kirkland's Vodka. This is Kirkland's French Vodka. It came highly recommended. Uh, according to sources that I know, this vodka is the same quality as Grey Goose, but it's about half the price. This huge bottle, I believe it's 1.75 liters, costs 20, $21.99, $22 essentially. And that is enough vodka in there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven cups. So that's enough to do seven jars. Okay, so we wanna have our handy dandy funnel here. So a shout out to my husband who went to Costco today for me when I asked him to and pick up this Kirkland French vodka. All righty. Okay, so we have our first bottle here ready to be filled. You want to have a nice funnel in there so that you don't spill and make a mess. And in we go. This is our Kirkland French vodka. And there we have our, our jar filled. I filled it up quite high. It's got this nice little flip top on here. And I like the little red stopper material there. I think that'll be really nice for Christmas next year. And then this flips down. And there, it's as easy as that. So here is our Madagascar vanilla, one ounce in eight ounces of vodka. The only thing left to do, very important, I'm gonna mark my jar with what's in there and the date. So here's the little label that I had on hand and we marked it for Madagascar beans with Kirkland French vodka, the date. So there we go. That is just a temporary label until I get some nicer ones that have pictures of a vanilla bean on them. I have those on order and those should come in pretty soon. I found them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box below. So that's all there is to that. Okay, we filled our second jar with the one ounce of beans. We have our Captain Morgan coconut rum ready to go here. So let's fill it up. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. We'll put a label on there. I've got Madagascar beans and Captain Morgan coconut rum. And the date. Alrighty, so we've got our label. Madagascar beans. VBK stands for Vanilla Bean King, which is where I bought my beans. If you've bought your beans for different sources, you might want to make note of which is which. And Captain Morgan coconut rum and the date. Now we're going to put these in a cool, dark place and just let them sit for months to a year. Hopefully by next Christmas we'll have a, a beautiful vanilla extract. I'll bring you back in six months or so and show you how these are progressing. Here's kind of, I don't know if you consider it a mistake or just I didn't think things through, but I loved the shape of these bottles. 
However, they're not the best. This is a very, a very uh, tapered jar. It's not totally round. It's not squared off. It's just tapered all the way around. And the labels don't really want to set on there nicely. So I don't know what I'll be able to do about that. I could also uh, tie-on label. I could use a tie-on since it's a Christmas gift. But I really don't want to get separated from the bottle the um, what exactly is in there. I want it to not get disattached. So I'm going to use this label even though it doesn't look real pretty. But we'll put a prettier one on when it's time to give these for gifts. Now here we have Tahitian vanilla beans. And these I bought by the piece, 20 pack. So let's see what these 20 Tahitian vanilla bean pods weigh. And these are also, um, I think they're grade B. Yeah, I believe these were grade B. So there won't be quite as soft and dewy and pliable as the, uh, as the Madagascar beans that I showed you earlier. See, these are a little drier, a little skinnier. But they're going to do just fine for making vanilla extract. So let's see. Oh, wow. 20 beans and they don't quite weigh an ounce. Wow. And these Tahitian vanilla beans, they definitely have a different aroma. I don't know how to describe it. But it's yummy. It's not as full-bodied and rich. It's kind of lighter. See, and these are, you couldn't bend these to tie them if you wanted to, or they would, they're pretty, pretty thin and crisp. And this kind of bean, you would not be able to open and get much uh, in the way of the caviar, which is the central portion. And so if you're doing baking and you need to split a bean and remove some of the caviar for baking, you wouldn't be able to do that with grade B beans. So that kind of shows you the difference. They're not so fat. It takes many more to make an ounce but they're going to make a fine vanilla extract. Okay, so there are our 20 Tahitian vanilla beans. So I, I couldn't possibly get away with putting five in a jar as I've seen a lot of people recommend 20 of those to make an ounce. Okay, so let's come back. I want, I really want the natural flavor of these Tahitian vanilla beans. I wanna be able to taste exactly uh, what they, what their flavor is, what their fragrance is. So I'm going to use the vodka again because this will allow the natural flavor of the vanilla bean to shine through. And this bottle is pretty big and heavy. So I'm going to set my camera down while I fill this jar. I'm going to do it off camera. Alrighty, so we filled the jar with our vodka. Looks beautiful. The beans are completely submerged in vodka. We don't want any of the bean above the liquid line. And then we're gonna just seal our jar. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but it can be done. There you go. And that's all there is to that. I just have to do my label. I'm gonna mark Tahitian and vodka and the date. Okay, so I think if I sort of put my label down at the lower part of this bottle, it fits on there a little bit better. And like I said, I don't want to really paste that on really tightly because I'm going to have a more decorative label that I put on these about a year from now. So there's three of our bottles all done. Here we have Ugandan beans that I bought from Wendy Farms off of Amazon.com. This is supposed to be one ounce, so let's see how it is when we put it on the scale here. Okay, we've got our beans on the scale and they are indeed one ounce. So yay, good on Wendy's Farms. I have to say that these Ugandan beans look very good. They have a very, a very fig-like smell, kind of like a dried fruit. And they are not quite, even though they're grade A, they're not quite as uh, pliable and as, uh, as plump as the ones that I got from Vanilla Bean King. But they still, I'm sure they'll still make great vanilla extract. I just wouldn't want to use this kind of uh, bean for baking, that's all. But the price was very reasonable, too. This ounce was only, I think, about uh, 8 or $10. Okay, guys, I just 
had a brainstorm. I went out to my garage where I keep all my canning supplies and I got this package of dissolvable labels from Ball. These labels are meant to be easy to remove. All you have to do is remove them with water. You just have to be careful during the storage process that they don't get wet or too humid, obviously. But here, I'm gonna show you how easily these remove. I, I put this label on just so I could remove it on camera for you. You can get these ball dissolvable labels at Walmart for like $5 for a pack of 60. And look at that. I mean, away it goes. And I had that stuck on there pretty good. And it would be even more quick to remove if I had my other hand on there scrubbing it. But you get the idea. They're completely dissolvable. Okay, so we are going to use dissolvable labels until I get my uh, supply of fancy labels in. And then at that time I can switch them out and these will be super easy to remove. Now these are some Indonesian beans that I bought from Amazon.com. And they are from a company called <laughs> Essence Food and Beverage. It was a special deal on Amazon. It was like 11 pods for $8.95 or something like that. So this is 11 pods. They were not sold by weight. We're gonna take these out and weigh them. Good till August 6, 2024. 11 vanilla beans, extract grade A. Okay, let's get these onto the scale. Okay, we have these grade A Indonesian vanilla beans. 11 beans weighed 1.4 ounces, so I have more than enough to do a uh, one cup jar. They're nice, and can you see how much they're glistening with the oils? And they smell really good, too. They have a different smell from the other two. Smell these and see what you think. Oh, yeah. It's different, huh? Yeah, it's different. It's a little muskier, it's more woody. I think. Yeah. It's kind of like sandalwood almost. Yeah, definitely. Mmm, really smells good. Okay, so we'll see what those do. We'll put those in the Kirkland French vodka and see how they come out. Okay, so we have our Indonesian beans in here. They were a little too long for the jar, so what I did was just bent the, bent the far end there about an inch. I don't know if you can really tell. You see there how I bent that bean? So... That way it fit in the jar. I'll be able to cover the entire beans surface with alcohol. Okay, so we'll get the Kirkland French vodka in there and get it labeled up and we'll be done with this one. Okay, these are the beans labeled Pompona. It's supposed to be an ounce from Vanilla Bean Kings. And they also say Madagascar vanilla beans. And on their website, it says for Madagascar, saying that the Pompona are the beans that grow wild. Now, I don't really know if that's true. I know Pompona is a totally different species from the um, Planifolia and the Tahitensis. So let's see what these smell like. Maybe they're just regular Madagascar beans. I don't know, but I'm going to label them Pompona. They're very long. So I'm going to have to fold these to get them to fit in the jars. Okay, these Pompona beans have a very figgy or raisiny smell. They really smell nice. And they do indeed weigh one ounce think I'm going to make an exception to my rule with these pompona beans. They are so long. I think I'm going to have to cut them in half. I don't want to fold them and see, look how they're several inches longer than the jar. So I'm just going to cut these in half and put them in the jar that way. Okay, there are our pompona beans cut in half. I've got one that's way up there. There we go. And this is going to make a great jar of vanilla extract. We'll add our vodka and be right back. And if you remember from when we weighed these beans, there were only four beans that made one ounce. They were very fat, very lovely beans. Okay, so we've got our vanilla bean king pompona for Madagascar, distilled in Kirkland French vodka and the date. Next, we have a package of 25, sold by count, 25 beans. 
of Madagascar Grade A. And we're going to take these out of the package and weigh them and see how much they weigh. Okay, we have our 25 beans there. You can see they look beautiful, oily, they smell great. And the weight is 2.3 ounces. So we can get a couple of uh, a couple of batches of vanilla out of this bag of 25 beans. Okay, we had 12 Madagascar vanilla beans that equal to an ounce that I weighed before I put them in the jar, and we topped that jar with Jim Beam bourbon. Okay, so let's get a label on this one. And there it is, ready to join the other friends in the back there. Man, I'm gonna have a lot of vanilla. Alrighty, we had eight nice fat grade A Madagascar vanilla beans in this jar. They weighed an ounce and we're going to use Bacardi Gold Rum. So let's get this bottle filled. Kind of cheating to get a little bit of the gold color already where we don't even have any we don't even have any vanilla in there yet. Vanilla extracted yet, I should say. The beans are in there, but the vanilla has not extracted its flavor into the liquid. Okay, let's get a label on this Okay, one. we have 11 vanilla beans in this jar from Vanilla Bean King Madagascar Grade A. It took 11 of them to weigh an ounce, and we are going to mix these with white rum, Captain Morgan white rum. So are you guys having as much fun as I am? And I'm not even drinking this stuff yet. This is too much fun. Woo! There we go. All the way to the top with white rum. Okay, we'll get this, the lid closed, get a label on it, and that will be ready to go. All right, we had... We had a half ounce of Ugandan beans and a half ounce of Madagascar beans, and I put them both in the same bottle. So that'll be a little mixing experiment, and we used Captain Morgan coconut rum. Alrighty, here we have another package of these beans that are marked Pompona. This is a one ounce package. I trust them by now. I don't feel the need to have to measure. There are five beans in here. They're very long, and I don't think I want to fold them. Well, maybe I will. I could cut them in half or fold them. I think I will cut them in half. Decisions, decisions. Alrighty, here we have the, the other ounce of Pompona beans. I was able to fold them at the bottom, maybe an inch or two from the bottom so that they would fit in here nicely. And we're going to label those up. We use Captain Morgan Spice Drum. So this is going to make a lovely spicy vanilla for the holiday baking next year. And this is our 12th and final bottle. It is a one ounce of Ugandan beans from Wendy's Farms. They look gorgeous and they smell delicious too. They have a really rich full body flavor. Now the other uh, Wendy's Farms Ugandan we had was put in uh, Kirkland French Vodka. So I think we're doing going to do this one in brandy. Brandy sounds good to me. We have some VS brandy. Let's try that. I understand it makes great vanilla extract. I gotta tell you, this was a lot of alcohol to buy. But of all of them, I feel the least badly about buying the brandy because I use brandy a lot in cooking. Okay, so we've got our, our 12th and final jar of Ugandan beans here. We put brandy. We'll get it labeled up and then we're going to get all these put and away. And all of these alcohols that I used were 80 proof or 40% alcohol with the exception of the coconut rum and the spice drum. Those were both 35% alcohol. The Captain Morgan white rum was 40%. The Bacardi gold 40%. The bourbon 40%. And the Kirkland vodka Boy, we put a dent in that huge bottle. The Kirkland Vodka is also 40% uh, alcohol or 80 proof. 
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this session. We'll have to come back a few months down the road and see how these progress. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I hope you had as much fun as I did with this. This was really fun. And I will talk to you all again next time. Bye-bye.